Hello everybody and welcome to Rest and Reason. I'm RP the Red Panda and today we're going to be doing Cosmic Encounter Fixed, which I would call part of a two-parter and it's the sequel to my game versus game video, Cosmic Encounter versus a Game of Thrones board game, which if you'd like to watch that video and I would highly recommend doing so before you watch this video, go ahead and click on this link right here and it will send you right over there and it will give you my description of one of the two sections I believe Cosmic Encounter needs a point boost in or will get a point boost from my fixes, which is masterability. Now, this has two areas that I'm trying to raise the points a lot in. And those two areas I didn't actually explain fully because this game actually won its round of game versus game. And most of the time when I do a fixed video or when I do them in the future, it will be after two rounds of them losing. This one had two rounds of winning and only one round of losing. So that means that I need to explain the second area aside from master ability that this game needed a little bit of a raisin or is getting a raisin and that is energy you see this game got a four out of five in energy which is really fantastic but it really simply can become a five out of five in energy because its only problem is that sometimes the games will go so poorly for somebody that it will lead to a bad experience that might make them never want to play the game again I think most people will play this game and really want to play it maybe even right away afterwards. But there will be cases like the one I'm about to show you where people are going to feel like there was nothing they could do. All right, so let's say that at the beginning of the game, Blue loses one, two, three planets right from the beginning out of their five planets. That means that they lost a total of 12 of their 20 ships. That is a lot to lose at the beginning, not to mention they're going to lose their superpower, their alien power, because they lost three of their planets. This will leave them honestly at a pretty big disadvantage. And if they were the last player to go, they haven't even had a chance to maybe even use their power if it was an offensive power. So they're going to have a pretty bad experience and feel like this isn't really a game for them. So this hurts the energy more because it's something people have to overcome to like the game, which you don't mind in a game, but can sometimes be a problem. I disagree with you for two fundamental reasons. First of all, in board gaming, you have to be willing and ready to play just about any board game. Otherwise, you're not going to truly enjoy all of the hobby or be able to play games with all gamers. Second, in real life, you will often find things you don't particularly love, but that you do for the good of other people. And that is what this teaches you. In sum, these people can just get over this. All right, so who here has a good point that there should be something people overcome in a board game? It's what helps us learn from board games for our bigger lives. What makes board games so great is that we can learn great lessons from them. The problem is when you're putting too much for people to learn at once. You see, Cosmic Encounter has two areas that people have to overcome frustration. One is where people are making kind of random moves. When you're negotiating with people, all sorts of different priorities and personality quirks are going to make them do things that maybe aren't the best action to take and that could ruin your game. And that's fine, but when you add that on top of the fact that these cards are almost entirely random, throughout the game, it makes it so that now you have to overcome both the randomness of the cards and the randomness of other people, which can be incredibly frustrating, especially to new players of Cosmic Encounter. So I would say that as long as we reduce Cosmic Encounter down to just one area where it feels like you have to overcome that frustration, that should be fine. And the area should be player negotiation. You should only really be frustrated by other players in Cosmic Encounter and not as much by really bad luck. Let's go ahead and get into my three fixes that attempt to do this and also fix the master ability. My first change is at the beginning of the game. You are going to get a hand of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. You're going to take those cards, you're going to keep one, and pass the rest on to your opponents. Then you're going to pick up the cards that the person beside you passed to you, 
take one and pass it around. All of you probably will recognize this as pass drafting, something we've mentioned several times on the channel. If you want to know more, go ahead and click on this link to find out a little bit more. So this is a very simple way to help lower the amount of luck and make it so that people really only have to overcome the feeling of helplessness when it comes to what other people do. But their hand, they not only did, but feel like they got to mitigate the luck by choosing what cards they have. In addition to this, they can strategize more by having seen what other people were able to choose. They don't know what cards they chose, so they're still having to adapt to whatever comes at them. But they have some idea of what might possibly come at them, which helps make it a lot more masterable and a lot more tolerable that they are losing or winning based off of things that were more their own choice. The second area is going to be the Destiny deck. And the Destiny deck has three cards that I'm going to be changing. These three cards are cards that are supposed to target the strongest player. The problem is whenever you grab these cards as the strongest player, you get to use them against the second strongest player in whatever category the card says. And that means that you're gonna take out your biggest rival. That makes you honestly probably a little bit stronger. You get to go fight the person you probably most need to fight. I think that what these cards should be, and my change is that they are cards that can't be used by the most powerful player. Instead, the most powerful player would have to take that card, discard it and shuffle it in with the other cards and then pick up a new card. This time they picked up a card that they could actually use and they just go ahead and use it. If they picked up another one of those cards, they do the same process again until they finally get a card that isn't one of the ones targeting the biggest person in certain areas. This will make it so that those cards which are supposed to balance out the game and make the energy more fun because the person at the top gets targeted, it's going to make that more likely and more often happening. My third change is the simplest of the three. You simply, instead of having players be able to invade two planets on the same turn, be able to invade only one planet on the same turn. The problem with being able to invade two planets on the same turn is that you only need five planets that you've helped invade, period, in the game. So in a five player game, you would only need to get through a three players turns to be able to win the game. That means two people could possibly have no turns in the game. And if their power says that they get to use it only on offense, that means that they're not even going to get to use their power before the game ends, possibly. And that is incredibly frustrating and incredibly unfair. Whereas if you can only attack one planet every turn, that means that somebody could only win in five turns which means that five players, all five of you are gonna get at least one turn. This will help make it so that the people who go last don't have a severe disadvantage because they haven't gotten to go and attack as much. So those are my three solutions to these problems. And I would love to hear in the comments what you guys thought of these solutions as you've noticed, I've added a part where I rebut my own ideas on why the thing needs to be fixed, why the game needs to be fixed. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to show people that I really do want to interact with criticisms. Do I always agree with them? Absolutely not. I have my opinions and I'm going to sometimes stick to them. But I have changed my mind based on some of the comments and things that I've had for discussions based on my videos. And I've really appreciated being able to think through board games with you. So please make sure to comment under this video or the Game of Thrones board game versus Cosmic Encounter video what you think of my arguments against Cosmic Encounter. And please hit that like button if you're enjoying this content. Now to the final results. So this game originally was a 3.6 out of 5, and that's a silver recliner. However, with these changes, I believe that it goes up to a 4 out of 5, and that makes it a gold recliner. I believe this is one of the greatest games of all time for area control. The one thing that hurts it is it's such an old game that back then they really didn't have pass drafting. So they just gave you a random hand of cards and that random hands of cards really didn't feel good. 
Now that we have pass drafting, we can still have that random adaptive strategy, but it can be actual strategy, actual planning instead of just, I got this random hand that sucks. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and please support us on Patreon if you can, because that will really be the best way to help us because this is not a high paying job, but it is a very enjoyable job. And I hope that you and I can enjoy it for many years to come. And as always, thank you so much for joining us today on Rest and Reason.